Is that um, a justification to, to keep on breeding every year? More of them? If they can't survive by themselves? Uh, no, but I... Well, that's an excellent question, actually. All right, thanks to Naomi the James. James, um, so I got this camera mic here, so I might just kind of go like this okay. to get your voice a little better. So you've read the sign, I think. Yeah. What is stopping you from becoming vegan today? Um, I think it's more so because I think it's important to sustain agricultural systems as well. Because I feel like the reason for becoming vegan has a lot to do with ed ethics, has a lot to do with um, pollution, and just like that entire scope as a whole. And for me, I find that my family has a very good control of that. Like we raise a lot of our own food, we do a lot of our own hunting, everything that we do, we try to keep it ethical. Hmm. So for me, it's more so I, for my own like moral code and ethics, I find like all the products that I consume fall under in line with that. So I'm comfortable doing it. Okay. So, so what, like, what products do you well, buy? I have, like products I purchase? Yeah, like you're saying that you, you purchase like uh, ethical products or ethical things, oh. right? So what, what are those things? Like, well, what do you eat? Typically all of it's raised at my house. Like, okay. I'm on a farm, okay. so yep. most of the stuff is raised. Like we have pigs, we have chickens, mm -hmm. we have turkeys. Like very, very rarely would we get like animal products outside of what we know like we've ethically grown and raised, right? Okay. Like same with like honey and stuff like that. Like we typically try to stick with ethical sources. And I think it's, I do think that veganism is a good choice for a lot of people. Cause I, I think that there's a lot of things that are, are done wrong. Like mass production, I don't think is a good thing. I think it should be done in a more responsible way. Yeah. And I probably would lower my meat consumption if I couldn't do it the way I'm like getting all the animal products now, but I find like I'm doing a good job with that, so I would like to continue that. Okay. So for me, um, I obviously I became a vegan for ethical reasons, right? Because I wanted to take a stand against animal abuse and exploitation, and that's that's kind of the the, the definition of veganism. I don't know if you know what it is or not, but the to abstain from exploitation and abuse as far as practical as possible, right? Yeah. If we don't need to do something, we shouldn't be doing it, right? That's yeah. my philosophy. Um, do you, would you consider yourself to be against animal abuse? 100%. Yeah, and I, I am too, so that's, that's awesome, right? Um, would you consider like killing an animal to be animal abuse? Uh, I would not if it's ethically done. Like, I find like it's important to have a good life leading up to the slaughter of the animal. Like, I would never go for an unethical shot or anything like that, I'd make sure it's quick and clean, okay. right? And up to the point of its birth and to the point of its slaughter, it's just had a good life, right? Yeah. Like that's, impo that's important to me personally. And I do think that it, like I've slaughtered animals before and it is difficult. Like I always feel guilty, but I'm also proud of like the product that I've raised and the quality of life I've given the animal. And so I'm very grateful for it each mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, so, so why is it hard to begin with then? If like if you if you're not justifying it afterwards with like being a good product and you know and and proud of that? I don't know. I think it's the way we view animals. Like a lot of people would smack a mosquito and they'd feel no ethical thing about like they've just taken a life. But as you go up to species that we find that are more similar to ourselves, mm -hmm. like when we get up like birds, like a lot of people don't quite see them the same as you move up to like more mammal-like animals, and then we, we uh, it's easier to draw correlations between ourselves as a species and them. So that's what I think I find hard. And a lot of the time, the animals I've been around for a long period of time, right? They, mm. Months, sometimes a year or so, right? So a lot of the animals I'm, I'm comfortable handling, like they've been handled typically since like birth or whatever, right? So you're, you're with, like animals that you raise, so it's sometimes it's difficult to do it. But overall, I, I feel like I've done a good job, and I've given the animal justice with his life, so I don't feel completely guilty. But there mm. is, like, in them in the moment, you usually feel, you know what I mean? It's it's somber type of thing. Do you think that the animal? Um, 
do they think they, they, they feel that they want to be in that situation after all that time of being treated well and humanely? Do you think that it would almost feel like a betrayal that they're being led into the barn or the shed and, and having a gun or knife put across their throat? If they knew more than that, probably. But a lot of the time, the, the animals was raised for that purpose, right? Right. So it's not like we're misdirecting them in what we have planned for them. You know what I mean? It's not like... A but do they have a choice, though? Like, because they're just born into existence for that purpose. Like, they have no say in that, right? Yeah. Like, they could come into, the, into existence and just live a free life in a field somewhere, right? And never get touched by humans or used by humans. Yeah. But they're purposely being brought in by farmers, right? For a purpose other than what they would probably choose, correct? I feel like for a lot of species of animals, we're at a point where we've selectively bred them that they wouldn't be able to exist in the wild. Um, for example, as turkeys, a lot of the time you'll have to dip their head in water or have them with like a species of chicken as well for right. them to be able to learn because they've been selectively bred so that they're in captivity. Same with cows. Cows aren't right. extremely smart animal. They're very they're very dumb in comparison to a lot of the wild animals, right? Otherwise they would just be able to get out of fences all the time, right? So they're not able to survive in the wild. Is that um, a justification to, to keep on breeding every year? More of them? If they can't survive by themselves? Uh... No, but I... Well, that's an excellent question, actually. Um, do you repeat it for me, please? So, like, you're saying that we need to, to breed the... We have to keep them in captivity because if they, they can't survive in the wild, they're just, like, so genetically altered that it would be impossible for them to survive on their own. We have to, we have to take care of them, but then we also have to use them is what your argument is, right? But um, my argument back, or my question back to you, is do we have to continue breeding them into existence just for that sole purpose of they wouldn't survive on their own? No, but I... I don't think there's necessarily a purpose to their existence at all. And we've just, that's what we found to do. What's your purpose in life? I don't have one, I'm just living, right? I don't, but, so I could arbitrarily say, well, your purpose is to start serving me though, right? And become my slave? Um, I don't think the animals are slaves, because. What, what is a slave? What a slave? Uh, I don't know the proper definition for that. Somebody who is exploited against their will for, uh, for one purpose or another, I would say. Okay. So like black people, right? They were exploited, yeah. they were slaves, right? 200 years ago to work the fields, right? Yeah. Against their wills. They were taken away from Africa. They were put on ships. They were taken there. They had no say in what happened to them on those farms. Those farms. Now, instead of black people, we're just taking another sentient living being and we're doing the exact same thing to them, no? Yes. To, to, an, to an extent. I would... I don't know, I feel like the way I look at it is humans were predators. Like I don't consider us like herbivores in any sense. Okay. Do you do you hunt with your bare hands? No. Do you chase down uh, I don't know, your prey? No, but we've evolved to we've evolved our like frontal cortex so that we think more than like that's how we all compete in Neanderthals. We th we're smarter, not stronger. Yeah, we're and we're definitely a smart species. I agree with that absolutely. We've also we're so smart that we're able to make plant-based food systems, right? Yeah. Would we, and 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 have the ability not to eat animals anymore, right? Yeah. Um, I think you're onto something there because a lot of the meat products we can consume now, and generations from now we're not going to know the difference because they can now clone leather and they can they can substitute all these like farms with laboratories, right? We're just not at the we're not just we're not there with the technology to do so yet mm -hmm. so we're still relying on these systems and i think these systems are important though because a lot of times you'll be growing crops and if you have cattle in there you can uh, rest the field and whatnot right and same with chickens you can have them on these fields and clear these areas and then you can plant a garden there right yeah and i think that we've set up these systems that require the life of animals to like live in these areas and they we set up these like pseudo environments for these animals to exist in where they they take care of the plant life and the plant take, like takes care of them and we've just asserted ourselves in like as like i guess the predator of that area where we take like the vegetation that we'd like and we take the animal product that we'd like right and i that's just how i see it first yeah, no, and I, I, I understand your point where you're trying to make absolutely. Um, should we be protectors or should we be 
um, predators to these animals? I think protectors. I think if you were to ask a lot of responsible and respectful hunters, not trophy hunters, but like responsible and respectful hunters, like especially like a lot of First Nations, if you ask them, they have very high respect for the environment that they took animals from. They took, they harvested like fruits and vegetables from, right? Like for me personally, I find like deer are an important part of my lifestyle and I would want to always protect them so that there's always there. Uh, for generations. So if you were if you were abused and stuff, but your abuser really respected you for your some qualities that you had, would that then justify to continue the abuse? So no, it wouldn't. But I I would disagree. I don't think it's abuse. Well, let's just go back to abuse then. So what is your definition of abuse? My definition of abuse. I don't. I would don't have a solid founding of the definition of abuse. So to use something is what? Is just to use. Like I'm going to use this device. I'm using it, right? Yeah. What is, would be an abuse of it? Uh, to use it incorrectly. Smash it on the ground or shove it in your face. It's an abuse. Yeah. I say that when we're not we're using animals or abusing them, it would be to use them. Period. Right. And to use them for a, a purpose that they don't want or don't that that would be not in line with their their nature, right? So for instance, I, I would say like it's an abuse to put an animal like a, a cow, a dairy cow, yeah. in a factory farm and forcibly impregnate her so you can have milk. I would agree with that as well. I think like, did, you, did you know that about cows? Yeah, I knew they have yeah, I, and I think they're terrible because for the emissions they have, like yeah. they're uncontrolled emissions and they're, a lot of the environments are force fed. I don't know how much you know about chickens, but a lot of chickens are bred and force fed to the point where they can no longer stand. That's why we have some Cornish Giants as a breed and they typically are fed too much too quickly. So we run them on a gr grass feeding system. So that way that they, they grow at a healthy steady rate okay. instead of like overgrowing. So what, let's just change it to a dog, for instance. Like, yeah. And obviously dogs have laws to protect them against animal abuse, right? Yeah. So would, it, would I go to jail if I put a knife in a dog's throat right here right now? Or get a fine or some kind of um, penalty, right? Uh, I don't actually know the law. And it's, so yeah, under the Animal Protection Act, you can get some severe fines there and actually go to jail for, for abusing a dog, right? Or a cat? You, for like... For like killing a dog or a cat, yeah. or yep. really, yep. I know not that. not hum not like a euthanization at a vet or something like that. Okay. But if I just go, okay, that dog's healthy, it's fine, like that, I'm just gonna stab it in the neck. Okay. That that would be is abuse, same, right? Is it the same for like mad dog disease and stuff like that? Well, that's that's a well, rabies has it's, it's it's a disease that needs to be controlled, right? And we don't want it to start getting into the population of other healthy animals. So there's some certain certain things that need to be done. Okay. But let's just let's just focus only on animals that are completely fine. There's nothing wrong with them. They're totally yep. fine, right? I decide to kill one against their will, right? That's abuse, right? Uh, I feel like I'm lacking context where I would say something. What if I took a bag of kittens and I drowned them? Is that abuse? Sorry, your sister got off the so. Oh, okay. Can you come back for me? Okay. Please? Okay. This is actually lots of fun. Yeah, so I mean, like we're kind of onto something there with the the abuse. So let's let's just take it right where we had to leave off. So bag kittens, yeah, drown them in the lake. There's nothing wrong with them at all. Yeah, abuse or no? That's definitely abuse. Yes. Okay. So if I take a bag of kitten or a bag of pigs now, yeah. and just decide to cut them up because you know what, I like bacon. What is different about between cats and pigs? The use that you're the the use of the animal. Like for me, the, a kitten use is companionship and I'm I'm more so self-driven and more so guided towards like the human species as like a reason why a lot of these things have we've selectively bred a lot of these things for specific purposes right, right. like I'm but what are those what are those reasons based off of reasons S who, who made those rules nobody nobody made those rules those are those are choices that I feel like each person chooses to make, right? So it would be considered arbitrary then? The choices? An arbitrary reason to say that a cat is worth more, um, it shouldn't be abused, but a pig doesn't matter. Uh, somewhat. I feel like we've adjusted our society and our view of animals differently. Like, I don't, I don't view each, each and every thing as the same. I don't think each and everything is equal in terms of animals. Like, 
they have a function, they have a role, they're, they're, they look different, they sound different, right? They do different things. What do they have in common? common? They're both mammals. Do they both feel pain? Yes. Do they both have, um, do they both have families? Um, no. They, they have brothers and sisters, a parent, a father, right, a mother? Uh, not the same way that we. No, I, I'm not saying, but for humans. But do they have some kind of a like a family network? Not really. Not for pigs. Okay, so we'll we'll just we'll disagree to agree on that one. But we, but they both feel pain, right? Yeah. What is the trait difference that says it's okay to cause pain and suffering and kill an animal, but we can't do it to a human? Thank you. Uh, that's just a human bias, in my opinion, and I think that's raised from necessity, a bias of necessity, because at one point it was a necessity to um, take out animals from the environment for sustenance. I would, I would say, if you were to say that we no longer have to do that, I would say that's correct, but it's, I think you sh if you choose to do it responsibly, you should still be able to. Should, you, so you're saying you should still be able to to kill animals and yes, that's what you're saying. Eh? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, and I obviously take the opposite opinion. I don't think if we can't justify something, we shouldn't be doing it, right? If we can't justify abusing certain humans or humans in general, then we shouldn't be doing that, right? Yeah. And obviously, the majority of society agrees yeah. you shouldn't be able to abuse humans. Yeah. Obviously, we're not there yet with with animals, right? Most animals. Yes. We we kind of agree with cats and dogs. You have to leave them alone. You know, they're they're part of the family now. We're gonna I, spend all this money on them. I wouldn't draw my ethical lines on people that would choose to to use them as animal products I'm personally I wouldn't do that because that's just not this uh, life choices I made and part of my ethics you know what I mean but like in in China I know they have like I don't agree with how they go about uh, like harvesting dog meat but I I wouldn't say they should still have the right to do that if they did it responsibly if you understand what you, you say they should or should not have that ability to kill dogs and cats in China they, sh they should be allowed to. They should be allowed to? I disagree with how they do it. Oh, okay. So if they did it in a really nice and humane way, then it would be okay? I, yes, if they did it humanely. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, and I mean, like, I'm, I'm, I understand your position, where you're coming from. I, I Obviously, I take the opposite opinion. I don't think there's a, a justified way to, to kill an animal. Like, I mean, if we wouldn't put ourselves in those same slaughterhouses, why would we do that to... to to uh, to animals, right? Yeah, I think that's I think that's just a human bias because I would would you be comfortable saying like if a mosquito was biting you, would you smack it? So I would kill a mosquito yeah. because you don't know if it has diseases and all like that. Yeah. But I do what is practical and possible, right? First, I would wear bug spray, right, or mosquito spray, right, because I don't want to have to go around smacking mosquitoes all day. Okay. But I mean, when you come down to levels of sentience, that is something that we have to. That, that's what kind of where vegans start to draw line okay. is sentience right what is the level of sentience of a mosquito versus the level of sentience of a, a pig or a cow or a sheep or even a fish if i was to take that stance as well then i would say that they would have to be, their sentience would have to be that of a human for me to draw that moral obligation to that i think they should be preserved the same as human right so what 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 is a human what is the sentience level of a human then well, they would have to. I would have to know that they have the same possible skills as a human, if you know what I mean. Like, so, so pigs are actually smarter than three-year-old children, right? Yeah, probably. They're pretty smart. They, they are. They're very smart. They can do puzzles and stuff like that. But let's just say that uh, there was a mentally handicapped human, and there's lots of them in the world, yeah. or blind, or deaf, or mute, or let's say they had no feeling whatsoever. They were a vegetable, right? Okay. On a bed, deathbed. Does that mean they shouldn't have rights then, or the same rights as less than animals? I don't think they should be. The rights should be removed. But for me personally, if I lacked what made me myself, and I felt like I was, I was restricted no longer like live a proper life regardless if it's human or animal i think you're you're not giving them an unfair life and that would be i guess up to interpretation of each situation but i would still think for me personally if i was out of it completely and i i you know what i mean like my brain no longer functioned the way where i could understand my scenarios i would like personally i would feel like 
in my personal opinion, I would want to be removed from that. So you would make the personal choice to, to end your own life or have somebody end your life for you, right? Like pull the plug situation. I yeah, would, yeah. I wouldn't, so I wouldn't force my parents to like do something like that or no, no. Family. Yeah. Right. So like you're saying, um, you're maybe like from right now, you're saying I want this to be a testament so that if I ever become a vegetable, somebody's gonna pull the plug for me, right? Yeah. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, and I I don't wouldn't want to put that responsibility on somebody either. I don't think that's I don't think we there should be a certain responsibility to take care of. They're obviously up to a certain point, but for me, like, you're taking care of me in a quality of life I wouldn't want to live. Great. So the, the big difference, though, between right now and what's happening to the animals is that you've actually had a chance to voice what happens to you. The animals never get that chance, right? Do they say, I want to die? No. They're also born to a situation where they have no voice, right? They are the voiceless. I'd say correct, yes. So how do we know what they want to have done to them? We don't. So should we give them the benefit of the doubt and say, you know what, they probably don't want to die unless proven otherwise? Uh, we can do that, yes. That's something that is definitely the reason why I feel a lot of people turn to veganism. But I, I believe personally that we can, would you agree that the animal will die regardless of our intervention? Well, everybody dies. It's just depending on when that death rate, death day will be. And most of the factory farm animals are, have a date of birth and an already planned date of execution. Okay, let's say for example, do you think it's a worse death to be, to be shot and dead immediately or to die of like a heart attack or a pneumonia? Because I've had a cow die of pneumonia and it's horrendous. They have, they have a seizure and it's, it's a much more brutal death than if I was to just shoot the cow. Or the third option, not have a death at all during that time, right? Because that, that is a third option, right? Like, I mean, some there are definitely going to be animals that die from these other diseases, right? Yeah. Especially being on farms, they're going to attract a lot more diseases, yeah, right? Diseases. Yeah, absolutely. Pneumonia, and isn't that like a part of your, like a lung? Like, isn't a lung disease or something like that? Oh, yeah. So, so they're around a bunch of other cows and they, they got it because they're sick, right? From the other cows, no? Typically. I only have five cows, so yeah, yeah. I don't have a lot. Yeah. And they're spread out enough that it wouldn't be an issue. But I would argue that any death, that death is inevitable for the animals, and I, and we're just inserting that time of death so that we can get the best use of the animal. But do the animals have to exist in the first place? Are you suggesting we euthanize all the animals? Or no, no, well, so 90, no, well, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but almost 90 billion animals are brought into existence every year forcefully. They're forcefully impregnated, the mothers, to produce these insane numbers, right, 90 billion. Yep. If, we, if everybody just went vegan, that number would start to drop where we wouldn't even need to have, like, any kind of mass euthanization. So you would vote that, like, the way I'm trying to understand this is, you don't want these animals to exist at all so that there's no chance for abuse of the animal? Well, I, so let me just flip this, the question on you. Would you want to be born into a situation where you know that you were gonna be abused, or would you just rather not be abused at all and just not live and exist and not have to experience that pain? Because that's the only two choices that these animals get, right? Either they don't get to, to live, or they live in hell. I would, for me, the animals that I have are definitely not living in hell. Do they not get a knife across their throat when they die? Would you, would you say that's hell? If you were well, okay, no, let's, let's just take out that. We'll talk about your cow specifically, but let's just talk about 99.9% .9 of all animals on this earth are factory farmed, right? Yeah, that's right. They never see the sun, right? They're just stuck in cages and, you know, and living in their own filth, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just talk about them. Okay. Do you think that is hell? having to suffer and get fed antibiotics more than the human population? Hmm. I don't think it's comparable. I don't think you can directly compare it to hell as like these two are the same things, but I do think it's... An unfavorable situation. I do think it's an unfavorable situation. I would, I would go farther than that. I'd say it's a terrible thing that they're doing. Sure. I don't agree with, I don't agree with how they go about doing it. Okay. So... Let me just change the situation to now to your like free range, well taken care of animals. Yeah. Would you rather be an animal in that situation where they, you know, you live your life, you get taken care of, but 
a farmer walks up to you and says, tomorrow is your death day, right? And then he takes you by the collar or whatever and then brings you around the shed and says, thanks for your service, and then just sticks a knife in your, your throat and you bleed out and you're gasping for air. And then he, meanwhile, he says, you know what, you're going um, to be on the shelf tomorrow there. Thanks for your service, man. Or would you rather just not die or not live at all in that exploitation? Hmm, I would choose to live because I feel like you can accomplish even with a determined end. Because I feel like you're, you're, you're trying to make me to compare to like living versus not living. And I would say that even if I had cancer, I'd still, I would still live for as long as I could. Even mm -hmm. if I knew like I only had six months left, I would still live for as long as I could. And I would also compare, like, I've, I've never, like, once tapped on my animals and, and told them, you are dying tomorrow. It, Obviously, it, the farmers usually don't do that, but they also carry ledgers saying, okay, this guy is dying tomorrow, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm way less organized than that, so I would it would be like, okay, it's, it's cold enough that we can preserve all the meat or whatever type of thing, and I would, I would just pull them off to the side, mm -hmm. right? It would be very... Are you fearful at all about like the upcoming plant-based food system and like you know all these like small farms being shut down and then it's going to be going to more of like uh, like veganism growing in popularity? I'm not scared of veganism growing in popularity because I think generally it always has had the best in interest of everybody in mind because mm -hmm. I, I find like a lot of people that choose to go vegan typically have the best interests of the animals in mind. Yeah. Right. And I think that's an important thing to do. That's. That that's what I would say I have, but we have comparatively different standpoints on what we what we view for the best interests of the animal, right? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, and obviously they're saying, like, another, like, 40 or 50 years, like, veganism is going to be the, the majority of people on this earth, right? It's just because the earth can't sustain meat, milk, dairy, cheese, and eggs with only one earth. Like, we're currently using, I think it's one-third of all land mass for like animal agriculture yeah like it's it's insane right and we just yeah we're doing a, a terrible job of both distribution and we're we're overproducing like big plants they'll just produce more and humans are picky as well like they'll you'll produce a whole pig yeah but only certain sections of the pig will be sold completely right so mm. we're, we're very wasteful with what we do and we can be we can definitely like cut back on what we produce, and we can do a way better job of what we produce. And we're also getting to, we, I think it's 8 billion people in, in the world right now, and we're, we're, like, we're going up to 9 billion, 10 billion, like in 50 years, like who knows, it might be even like it'd be 11 billion. Do you think the earth, if we're currently using one third of the earth, do you think we can all eat meat? Do you think we can all eat eggs and cheese, even if we were like really like not picky to eat all like the, the, the scraps and stuff? Yeah. Um, I think, we, I think we're smart enough that we could do it in moderation, but I don't think we can't. Con obviously, we can't continue having like a steak the size of your dinner plate. That I didn't think that was ever sustainable or a good idea. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't like. I don't. I don't know all the science behind it, but I just know that yeah, like it isn't sustainable. Like we can't support the population. We're going to have to start going vegan. Like people are. It's just not going to happen. Eh? So. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's great. Thank you so much for the conversation. That was amazing. Yeah. So that was, uh, I know we kind of got a little bit winded out here, but yeah. uh, <laughs> we stay with me. It's kind of going to start to, to die down a little bit. Do you have any final thoughts or anything you want to say? Or? Uh, honestly, I, I just kind of want to know all your, like, if you have a website and stuff like that. Yeah, so I, I don't have a website, but uh, I have Edmonton Vegan Outreach on um, YouTube. I'll, uh, I'll give you my card and stuff, okay. and then you can feel free to watch some of the other debates I've had and stuff. Okay. And, uh, and if you ever have, have any questions, just comment section and okay, let me know. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, that was a good chat. Do you think you'll make any changes after today? or? No, because I've I found that I made all the changes I wanted to make, mm -hmm. and all the changes that, I mean, not to say that you can, like, you hit a point and you can't do better. You can always do better. I, I wouldn't put a cap on that. But for the most part, I think I've done everything I want to do, and I'm I'm following all my personal ethics that I, w I would put upon, like, how I carry myself and how I do farming and hunting, hmm. right, that I would like to continue that way. Yeah. Yeah, and in closing, I'd say, like, obviously, me and you have different opinions right now. Obviously, I think that there's no way to ethically abuse or ethically use an animal against their will. I mean, you wouldn't want to be running in the woods and, and get shot by a hunter, and you wouldn't want to be put on a farm and live 
wonderful life, but then but take, be taken back behind the barn, right? So it's the same in nature. Like you could be running around, and then you get a deer which gets eaten by a wolf, right? Yeah, but uh, but we're not in nature right now. Like we're in a, a town. I would I would agree that we have we have the ability to avoid doing that versus the wolf is required to do that. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. But I, for the purpose of the animal's existence, the animal doesn't care if it's killed by a wolf or a human. Yeah, I would I would push back on that one a little bit because I mean like an animal, you don't know what they're thinking, right? Do you think that they care? They may care. You don't know. I think they're in, they're indifferent to the source of death, unless they knew for a fact one death would be cleaner. And so, I can guarantee that a human death is cleaner than being killed by a wolf. What happens when you sh shoot at a deer but you miss? Shoot at a deer, miss the deer completely, or maim the deer? You miss them, but they hear the gunshot. They run off. Typically. Why would they run off if they're and don't want to give you a second chance there to get them? It would bug on your shoulder. Massive. You get him? No, See, look at that. I don't know what he is. I don't want to just kill him for no reason. <laughs> Jeez. Um, what was the question again? So why don't uh, deers uh, give you a second chance to kill them if they're they don't care about their source of death? Sometimes they do. They don't always. They're, they're smarter animals. They'll typically, if there's loud noise and they have, they don't know the cause of the noise, they'll typically scatter. But if they, if they're just, a lot of time they just assume the loud noise is some sort of predator. So they typically move away from the source of potential danger or potential death. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a deer then. Let's say, yeah, like they, they hear a gunshot, but they run off in that direction. What, what does that say to you though? Uh, that I'm not shooting that deer today. But what do, you, what do you think is going through the deer's mind or what, what is their natural instinct if they're running the opposite direction of a gunshot sound? Their natural instinct is uh, a loud unknown noise that they need to get away from because it's- a pot a Potential threat, right? Yeah, potential threat, yeah. So they probably want, and why would they want to get away from potential threats? Because the evolution of all species is to survive and reproduce. Right. So, I mean, obviously you can conclude from that is they probably don't want to die, right? Right. So, but we put them in a position so that we can eat them, right? Uh, we haven't put deer in a position. The deer have always been there. We well, just, we put ourselves. I'm just talking about animals in general. So, like, including cows, pigs, chip, chickens, sheep. They don't have a chance to run away because they have a fence, right? Protect, uh, stopping them from running away. Correct. They're fenced. Most of the time they're fenced then, yes. What does that say about what we're doing then if we're not allowing them to do something that would, they would do naturally? Hmm. I mean, naturally, most of those animals are grazers. That's why we put up fences, so we can contain their grazing habitat, right? Are slaughterhouses open fields? No, slaughter I don't support slaughterhouses. But the most part. how do you kill them then? How do you kill an animal? How do you kill them? gun or a knife. So just like behind the barn type thing? Not in front of the barn. Where, wherever you have a safe area where you can contain that. So you, so you have the license to kill on your and, and consume meat that's killed on your farm then, right? We have a hog growing license. Right, okay. So you're allowed to kill them on your own farm and, and then consume them? You're not allowed to sell them though, right? Um, we, if we do sell any of our products, yeah. that would, it's typically the like family and friends and whatnot. Okay. And we, we do go through like a butcher. So right. So what does a butchery look like? Is it an open field? No, a, a butcher is, is typical to cutting up. It's not actually part of the slaughtering. I know. So they have to go to a slaughterhouse first, right? Even if they're going on a farm. Okay. So we're back to that part. They're in a slaughterhouse, no matter what, if they're free range or if they're a factory farm, right? Uh, if it's selling product, but it's for the slaughterhouses for, are for the purpose of maintaining a certain quality of food and safety of the product. So the product is consumable. Like, you know, it's a safe product to give out to consumers. So the point I'm trying to make is that animals don't willingly want to be in a, in a slaughterhouse. They would run out if they had the chance, right? Yeah, yeah they would they run. Cattle prods to get them in there. We've got uh, the Judas goats. We've got closed cages. What does a knockbox look like? 
I don't know what a knockbox is. So it's, it's that little, I don't know if you've ever seen slaughterhouse footage or not, or I've ever been in one, but they lead them into like a, an area where two metal gates are right beside them and they push them head forward. They can't even turn around. That's how close, oh, that's yeah. a knockbox. They close in behind them so they can't move. Yeah, they right. thrash and stuff, but they're so confined that they can't do anything. Yeah. And then that's when the captive bolt pistols put in their head and, yeah. and stuns them, right? You put them in the same thing when you vaccinate them though. So I wouldn't consider- But vaccinations for what purpose? Vaccination for the health of the animal. Right, to make them survive longer so you can you can grow the meat and stuff, right? Yeah, but I would argue that consuming the meat product would be healthy for a person as well, in moderation, obviously. Well, yeah, you can you can definitely talk about the health benefits of, of eating anything, right? I mean, obviously, I don't have any health issues, but I focus only on the ethics, right? I mean, the ethics, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a fair thing. I feel like that's for a lot of people, it's ethics, because obviously we're evolved to a certain extent, like how our teeth are shaped. That consuming meat products is something that is not atypical and something that we're evolved to do it's just not i understand the ethics behind not wanting to do that or choosing not to and it's admirable it's just not for me personally hmm. yeah and, and I, I don't think veganism is a is um meant to be just like a oh i feel like it it's my personal that's my thing yeah it's you're actually being altruistic right yeah you're saying that i am willing to do something for an animal that will never know me mm-hmm. because I don't agree with what's happening to them. That's what veganism is. Yeah. And that's the same thing that I'm doing for my animals. I just view it differently. I don't view what I'm, I don't feel like I'm abusing the animals. Like I, I don't forcibly move the animals. Typically like our cows at least are bottle fed. So all of them, we, we have them trained to come when we call them based on like feeding habits. So like they know when they're, we'll call them when it's time for them to get feed. So like if we ever need to move them, we can just, we can move them very easily. Mm-hmm. We don't have to be forceful with them. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's obviously we, we've, uh, it's really hard when you have a farm, right? I mean, because you you want to protect your farm. You don't want to. I don't. I don't agree with how a lot of farms do it because I I believe that the larger the farm is, the typ- typically they're not as caring about like how they go about raising their animals. I know that for a lot of smaller farms, like I know my grandpa when he had cattle, like he was very personal with the cows. Like mm. he he always had like a very difficult time when it came to butchering. Like he's even he's sold cows because he got too close to them, right? So it's. It's about doing it, I think, properly. Did he ever have a story about what time when he found it hard to kill an animal? Yeah, he had, oh, I can't remember. He had like a massive steer one time and he was super friendly. He would, I don't know how he got out of the gate, but he would like go up to the house and whatnot. And he was generally a very friendly cow and he couldn't do it, so they just sold him. He was a massive cow too. So just send it to another farm to, to have it? slaughtered correct yeah and did he like he say anything about why he did that or Uh, i haven't talked to him about it but for i think you have a personal connection with the animal but you also have an understanding of the reason why you have that animal and it's it's not feasible to now sustain that so you do what you believe is a responsible choice and that would be making sure that you get the best use of the animal it's just something that for you morally and ethically you're now conflicted by so you just do what you believe is the best alternative option so yeah you've been put in a situation where you're given only two choices either you, you kill them or you off source the the killing right yes but it is not almost like a false dichotomy where we're only given two options but there are multiple other options would, that could exist what would you say are the multiple other options? farm sanctuary there's one in Wetaskiwin. there is one yep it's i've been to it myself what would you use is it, would he get any money from that? Cause it's not, you can't just like sell off product that he's been working hard for. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a sentient living being. And I would, I would suggest that it's not just a product like a, like a can of yogurt or something like that. Right. Like it's the living, breathing animal that wants to live. Right. Yes. But if, if it's the same with a, like a dog or a cat that you have, right. Then you're just not able to take care of it. You don't just kill them. You, you would try to find a new home and rehome. Right. Yeah. Do you, well, I don't think the way I'm trying to interpret this is like the raising of animals for like companionship is different than the raising of animals. I think they're just different guided purposes. Cause I don't think everybody, yeah, I'm, tr- I'm trying, sorry. I'm trying to think of a good response to that, but you have very well organized questions. 
Could, could you repeat it, please? The question? Um, so, yeah, like, I mean, so your, your grandfather said either, well, he can either go and kill, uh, kill that animal himself, but he couldn't, so he said, decided to just kind of like give it to another f farmer to do his thing, right? And, and, yes. and, and slaughter it and go through the whole process. But I was saying, I think it's a, a false dichotomy to suggest that you can only have two choices in that situation, right? Where you either kill it yourself or have someone else kill it, right? What about option C and D would be to send it to a farm sanctuary so it can live out its life? And I mean, like cows in the wild, they can live to 25 years old. What's option D? Uh, I would just find another, another willing, a vegan farmer, a veganic farmer that wants to go and, and have it on his fam, uh, farm. I mean, maybe that would be possible now, but that was like 30 years ago, I don't think. And yeah, veganism was not very well known that long ago. Eh? Yeah, especially in Alberta, especially like in the area that we are, we're very, a lot of our, a lot of people rely on like the beef system. Like we have the 4-H club for yeah. and whatnot. At the time, I don't think it, I don't think there was a possible other option that wouldn't have severely indebted though. So yeah, there's an, I'll, I'll give you a card and you can look this up here, but actually in, in Canada, there's Nation Rising and it's an, uh, a group that's dedicated to trying to get farmers to make the switch to the plant-based food system with with alternatives that make sense, right? And, you know, I mean, like, because obviously you take a look inside the supermarket, there's new product, vegan products coming out all the time, right? Yeah. And they need farmers to grow that product. So they're just helping people get into that as opposed to the traditional route, which needs to, to go away, right? I mean, like we, factory farming doesn't won't survive. Yeah, it has to die, right? Yeah. Like I mean, that's that's a, a necessity. But that is 99% of the the farmers out there, right? <laughs> I mean, you you're a, kind of an anomaly where you have a small farm and you're just yeah. selling to fans, family, that sort of thing. Hobby farm, I guess. Yeah. So, maybe you only have five cows, you said? Uh, right now we have four. I'd, at the most, we've had probably 30 pigs, but yeah. that's just because farrowing. Yeah, like when, yeah. when you get piglets in, yeah. the litters are, can be massive, right? So you could just suddenly have 60 pigs on your hand and you, have, you don't know what you're going to do with them. Yeah. And I think at most we've had like 100 chickens or so, maybe 150, and typically only enough turkeys that, to sell to like family for like holidays and whatnot. And maybe a little bit of surplus because typically with with animals when at least for chickens when you order them you can usually guess that about 10 percent will die due to like disease or something regardless of how well you've given them their vitamins and whatnot and made sure that they're good is it's just same for human populations hmm. Well, I think that's about time there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for sitting down for me. That's about a 40-minute talk there, but uh, that, that was awesome.